Hi guys, uh, welcome back to another video. I'm going to do a video on the Grunfeld as, um, the, from the black perspective. Uh, I did promise my, one of my friends I would I would do this and I uh, yeah, still haven't got around to doing it. I've been doing a lot of live blitz game, uh, videos lately and you wonder what that noise is in the background. That's a kind of a 20 minute live blitz video and I was doing on chess cube. I uh, gained like another 100 points. So I'm aiming to get to 20, 2800 on chess cube pretty soon. My play chess is already at 2700 and uh, yeah, I decided not to play more games tonight because there's hardly anyone on the line. But anyway, yeah, let's get back to the Grunfeld. So that's a d4, knight f6, um, c4, g6, knight c3, and d5. And in this video I'm just going to cover the Grunfeld basically. I'm not going to bother covering things like uh, any bishop g5 stuff, any um, random like London system things. They're pretty basic to play against. You just play normal developing moves, or you can just research them yourself. Um, otherwise, this video is going to be end up being like two hours. It's really ridiculously long. So let's just get straight into Grunfeld. D5. Uh, White can also try and delay by playing knight f3. And then obviously we don't play d5 yet, we only play d5 when the knight goes to c3. So as soon as the knight goes to c3, we can now play d5. If we wait, we don't, if we don't play d5 now, we'll go castles, and now white can play e4 himself. And now we're going to end up in a king's indian after d6. So not what we want, so we want to play d5 straight straight away. And um, the reason we need the knight on c3 is because after they take, the knight takes e4. Attacking the knight, we need to now take and then take take the knight on, on c3 because this, this c pawn becomes a big focal point in the Grunfeld with the bishop looking down on it. And now we can castle and then place c5 here. And this is the reason trying to delay by playing this knight f3 move first before knight c3 is not so good because it really limits White's options. It stops like the f3 variation and a couple of other things. Like Normally, the, the main variation for White to continue here is with. After castles, they go bishop c4, and then the knight on, which was to be on g1, would come to e2. Um, and this, that's the main variation. So playing the knight f3 straight away is not very good, and also, I was mentioning it quickly, um, after castles. This knight f3 move runs into big problems with bishop g4. This knight f3 move is playable with rook b1, but I don't think it's the best. You know, it runs into bishop g4, and then after you take and queen takes, Pawn becomes really weak after say c5, so this is why knight e2 is preferred. I shall show you. So knight c3, d5, so main line Grunfeld. Takes, knight takes, it's e4, takes, pawn takes, bishop g7, and now bishop c4, castles, and now knight e2. So now if I want bishop g4, they can play f3, they play c5, castles, knight c6, still putting pressure on this pawn, now they can play bishop e3. Or well, they can play d5 here, but I don't think it's as good as it tends to get black a good position after knight a5. And then black tends to play with b6, f5, e5 moves. Um, yeah, but black tends to get a really, really nice position here. So play, play normal continues, so bishop d3, go e5, and then to c4. F5, F3, so like uh, B6, and so the bishop comes out this way, the F4, and then the idea is you can even put your bishop on A6, start attacking this pawn, they can come round back this way if you might, and have a really nice uh, placement for, uh, spot for your knight on D6. And so you're going to get G5, maybe H5, attack, uh, attack, attack the king's side. Um, so D5 is not as popular. The main move here is to play bishop e3. And now white, black can play bishop g4. And this it, it, this time is actually working because now obviously f3 is the main move. If they don't play f3, we can f3 we can just take on e2 and then take on d4. So f3, bishop, bit, knight, knight to a5, attacking the bishop. And now this bishop takes f7 check, trying to win a pawn. Or there is just a simple retreat, bishop d3. I guess we'll look at this one first, bishop t3, and we take, pawn takes, and now drop the bishop back to e6. 
And okay, so now white sacrifices the exchange of d5. So the whenever you finish yet on the king's side, like say for example, Grun Grunfell, King's Indian, Dragon, um, the the bishop on g7 always tends to be your best minor piece. And so white's always very happy to try trade it off. So white would if they didn't play d4 here, they might try something like queen d2, bishop h6. But if you go queen d2 here, it's not going to be as good because now knight c4 problems. You have to take the knight, knight to bishop takes, and they're already threatening to take the knight and then take on take on d4. So this is not what, and, uh, and also black has the bishop pair here, doing very, very, doing very well. So, so we play d5 and now bishop takes a1 is the best move, queen takes a1. And black does, uh, white does gets a lot of counterplay, they're not threatening bishop h6 themselves with checkmate and also attacking the rook and also attacking the bishop. It's a clever move black can play here, it's just f6 because now if pawn takes bishop we can capture on d3 and so white would play bishop h6 here first attacking the rook, we can put a rook on e8 and still a pin on the bishop and and there's a couple of moves here. If they go bishop b5, we just drop our bishop back as well. Say they try to protect the bishop with queen d4, we just drop our bishop back to f7, bishop b5, and now e5. And yeah, this is a good move. Say we save the exchange and say queen f2, rook e7. And if they go for um, this position. So just king, so king h1, just and the king in, uh, out of the firing line of any queen checks. Also, you've got to be careful if they try bishop, bishop b5 here. Very careful with these queen checks, winning the bishop uh, potentially. So I don't think it's working here because knight d4, and then this is on pre, this is on pre. Uh, now you can't play bishop to d7, you have to move the rook, and this is going to be. Lost, but you actually you could do this. You could try rook dx now. Once the knight can't take his pin on the king, the pawn takes you go, rook takes. But after bishop e3, this is looking very dangerous, dangerous for the black. You can just play it simple first, you just go bishop, bishop d7. It's the be better move here, and obviously now white exchange, this is going to give. Uh, black a very good position because black's actually materially materially up. So king h1 is always a useful move there. Now rook c8. So that knight f4 is good. Up goes for the knight. Bishop d7, e5. And this is where white still has a very you know, very nice position because there is an exchange down. His queen's really looking down his g7 square and really trying to open things up. Especially with rook on e8, it's not very good here. And then also white can try clamp back in the black's position in e6. So now white and uh, black can play so knight, knight c4 and e6. We move bishop a4. That takes g6. Takes bishop takes g6. And we have a very complicated position. Um, and I'll make load the engine just to make sure it agrees with me. Yeah. I'm, not sure whether. Right, okay, yeah, so as you can see here, the engine actually is saying that black is just winning here. Yeah, two pawns up. So often it just recommends knight e5. And then bishop takes e8. And then bishop takes e8. And now, yeah, it's a really nice way just to tidy things up. Now black's threatening just to take 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 on take on d5. Um, so, so, but rook d1 has to be played, and now. It's queen d6 or something, yeah, okay. Well, yeah. black's just black's just a whole piece up here, so we need to look any further. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, I'll make sure I, I check that for you. I don't want to give you a line is it losing, because you never know. You might try this line in a tournament game, and it might be a really important game, and if I just said that this is completely... Wait, if I just said that this position, where'd it go? I lost it again. Uh, e5. Okay, if I just said this position is completely winning for black, and all of a sudden I didn't check the engine, and it was winning for white for some reason, there might be, I don't know, some crazy checkmate 
looks pretty scary if the king king like this the queen could easily get over here somehow and then uh, be in big trouble so yeah that's fine then this, this works so king h1 is probably not the best move it's a useful move but it's probably not the best because queen b6 check isn't really playing any of his lines knight d4 covers that pretty well um, okay so they go bishop d2 so there's no line attack knight we're going to play b6 so if they trade and get those double pawns, that's okay. We we don't mind trading off pieces when we're up materially. Queen b1, bishop f7. So now queen b1 is defending the bishop. So now we have to move our bishop out the way. Bishop b5, rook f8, bishop f6. Trying to win back the exchange. Queen d6. I think we get, get a pretty good uh, position now. Get back the exchange. and This is, this is a equal position. We can just break up these pawns of e6 f5 and I would have thought white would take control of the c file otherwise black will do it take control of the c file and then I guess you just break up these pawns immediately b6 takes and just like queen takes where they were threatening to take on a2 and actually look at this position white may uh, black may be better um, strategically, because if you swap all these pieces off, all the pieces come off and just goes king and pawn in game. Black's won here because he has the 2v1 majority on the queen side. And okay, so what's going to happen is the, this white king's obviously going to have to come this way to stop the majority, and then the black king will come over this way, take all these pawns off, and then and black will just queen these, these the king side pawns. So this is always winning. So if you're black in this position, you just want to trade everything off. So White defends this pawn, for example, or just moves it to a4, which makes a very logical, very logical move. Then sink like rook c8 makes a lot of sense. Just trying to trade all the pieces off, um, get into it, get into this end game where you're going to be a lot better. So that's if bishop d2. Bishop, to, bishop d2 is a lot passive move. Um, personally, if I was wild, keep the bishop in h6. You always have these chances of. Queen coming down to g7 of checkmate. Another move, rook e1. Uh, rook e1. I don't really recommend this move too much. It's trying to break through e e5. So a little, pretty subtle. So I want to go with knight f4 and then e5. And break through this way. So we just go bishop f7. Bishop b5. Queen b6 check. Knight d4. Rook e c8. And now bishop e3. See so how we're going to pay something like you can play knight 5 I need to sort of dis discover the attack on, on the queen. We just move our queen away, queen b6, bishop f2, knight c4, and I think black's actually doing really well now. We can just play a6, and the bishop retreats, we go b5, and just trying to swap off again as many pieces as we can, especially when we we have a rook, uh, a rook um, uh, for a bishop, so we're exchange up here. So, yeah, this line is. The Grunfeld is pretty uh, theoretical. It's uh, a lot of a lot of stuff in it. You got to learn. Um, Cause that was just that was just one variation, one small variation. There's also Bishop takes f7 check here. There's another big variation where if Black doesn't play accurately, accurately, he's just going to end up a pawn down. Bishop takes f7 for check. King, uh, rook takes pawn takes g4 and Rook takes um, f1 check. Now King takes. Um, in order to queen takes, center is going to be very vulnerable. Now black can play queen d6. There's a couple of moves here, but queen d6. Um, so we're attacking the pawn on h2, and also can bring the rook over. So e5. Now we can play queen d5. Um, bishop f2. So bishop, bishop f2 is a nice, um, nice move. Whereas knight, knight c4 is looking dangerous, attacking the bishop, bishop might move and rook is going to be flying across. There might be checks on checks on e3. So like it's a bishop f2, now rook d8. Trying to put as much pressure on this d4 pawn as possible. It's, uh, it's what uh, Grenfell players do a lot. Come on, queen c4. So now black's threatening to take here. And there's a pin on the queen. Queen b2. And now bishop h6. So the moment, before this bishop was sort of hitting a dead end, and that's found new life here. It's stopping any rook coming to c1, it can also come around the back, say you wanted to play rook f8, and then bishop can come to e3 and pin, uh, and pin against 
against the king. So I place, can play h4 here, try to play g5, and so rook f8, g5, and now something like um, even queen d3 is a pretty good move here. I'm pretty sure queen d3 works, let's have a look. See what good off puts he says. A slight advantage for white. Okay, so it's just saying uh, plus one, which pretty much means it's just because white's a pawn up, that's why. And a slight advantage to white. It takes knight c4, queen c1, queen f5. It takes. So let's go through this really quick. It's a slight better for white. Too, it looks fine for black, it looks really good for black because now you can just uh, sometimes it's really hard to trust engines because uh, one minute they'll say you're winning and next minute they'll be like uh, it's equal and it's because it doesn't, it doesn't really take into account positions and theory and just motives, that sort of stuff and the computer mainly looks at material and that's why if you have a coach, a lot of coaches will won't recommend that you look at an engine to, to play an opening with because I'm pretty sure the engines like to just play random openings. So we go back here. So, okay, so I think right, here you go. So they say D4 is good. But the second option was knight F knight C3. Now okay, now I give him E4. E4. Now okay, now it's gone back to knight C3. That's so knight C3 is not a good opening. So. Uh, yeah, it's really hard to trust the engines, and if, if black can get his king, see to d5, white's gonna white's gonna have a lot of problems. This bishop's very blocked in by all these dark squared pawns, and this king has just got a lovely, lovely square on, on d5. And black may be a pawn down, but I think he's got a very good position. White, uh, the engine also doesn't take it into account. That these are doubled, so it really isn't really. It's not really a pawn. It's like half a pawn. I think black has enough compensation even to go on, go on and win this position. Uh, because white, white has so much weaknesses. There's so many pawn islands as well. He's got like, one here, and one here, and one over here. He's double pawns. But my state pawns is not very good. Black's only weak pawns. This, this pawn here is the only isolated pawn. Yeah, this is pretty... You're not actually going to get this position in the game. All this trading off. This is all like engine stuff. Uh, there's like H4 and just crazy Queen C1 sacks and things. And if you don't want to go down that route, you can always drop your bishop back to G7. We don't even have to play Rook F8. You can just play uh, play another move here. You might even go play Queen D3 immediately, G5, and then Knight C4 still, and then just put your bishop back to G7, and then play Rook F8 afterwards. Because here, they say Queen D3. So what the engine's actually saying is equal here. And that's despite black still being a pawn down. So it's interesting how how it thinks this position's equal. So well, at least it, at least the engine agrees on something. Okay, so we just covered the the main lines, and now I'm gonna uh, briefly cover all the sort of minor lines and anti Grenfells and things. Most of them are pretty easy to play, it's just developing move. So yeah, let's go cover the, the knight f3 line. It's because a lot of people might try playing knight f3 first. You might play knight f3 on move 1 before you can go in d4 and trans transport yourself into, into, a, into a Grunfeld. So here, white plays bishop b2, c5, rock b1. And now White right gets his rook off this uh, dangerous diagonal. So he takes d4, so he takes d4, queen a5 check, and now bishop d2. This is a sack in the pawn. You can play queen d2 as well. Queen takes, bishop takes, and b6, and now black's is going to try to attack these uh, central pawns. Castle, bishop b7, d5, bishop a6. So now this bishop's really strong, and now we're going to swap off of these bishops in then um, you, know, you can play f5 here or you can go rook ac I might play rook ac first and 
The reason this is not very popular to play Queen D2 is because White just doesn't get anything out of the game. When you play White, you're supposed to be looking to use your advantage of having the first move and trying to trying to actually go and win the game. And here, uh, White has nothing. And actually, I would prefer to play Black here because if you swap everything off, once again you have these two pawns against the one. So in an end game, this king and pawn end game, um, White has lost here. So this is why I would wouldn't mind having having black, especially when you know black's move. We've got a rook on c8. Obviously, we, white doesn't want us to double on the c file. And, you know, start coming to rook, like rook c4, attacking this pawn and doubling, having good complete control. So they're gonna um, uh, also put a rook on on the c file, and you know now it's just gonna get gonna get pretty tense. You know, and basically what's gonna happen is white's probably gonna end up taking. We'll recapture and then I'll go rook c1 and all the rooks are going to get swapped off on the c file and then we we can just try swap off the minor pieces and that's going to get a really good position you know, at least equality if not if not even a chance to win so this is why bishop d2 is preferred here it makes it because this pawn is, it is a little bit of like a poison pawn it's very dangerous to, to take it as long as, but as long as you know fear you should get you should be fine so castles, bishop g4, bishop g5. So now both of these pawns are under attack. And then h6, bishop goes back to e3. It's actually not good to take on e7. We just go rook e8. Um, so it takes on e7. So rook e8, and rook takes b7, knight c6, bishop c5, we take on e4. So this is not so good for white. The bishop goes back, now we put knight c6, d5, bishop takes f3, bishop takes f3, knight e5, um, rook takes b7. So, so far, things are level, material material wise. Uh, black's also threatening to take on on e7, now e6, and then they tend to take on e6, queen takes e6, and rook takes a7. And yeah, this tends, to end, this tends to end up in a draw, these sort of positions. Uh, white's a pawn up, but the, this is this is drawn. You know, you, as long as you play um, with good play. If they try to play d6 instead, trying to promote, actually, it's going to lead to problems for for white because if black starts getting this pawn going, he's actually he's just got a pass pawn. Well, yeah, white has one too, but you can just stick a rook behind it, and it's really hard for them to actually promote this pawn, especially when you got connected rooks on the back rank and. Um, very strong knight on this square, and our, our pawn's pretty fast. We've got a rook behind it, and the queen can just drop back somewhere, and uh, yeah, it's going all the way. So, once again, white is not really getting much out of these positions. This is why knight f3, knight f3 is not the best, and that's why uh, bishop bishop c4 is preferred here. So I'll take a look at some of the lines. Okay, so they don't have to take they don't have to take on d5. They can play stuff like. Um, okay, well, knight, knight f3 is a move that's delaying things, and then bishop g7, queen b3, so the Russian variation. Now we take on c4, queen takes c4, castles, e4, and then you can just play a6, bishop b2, b5, this is just a simple way to play against it, queen b3, c5, and after takes bishop b7, castles, and we just regain our pawn on e4, bishop g5, knight c6, just develop, and uh, yeah, I think this just end up pretty equal here. All the pieces are going to come off. Just stick a rook on, rook on d8, and already both these pawns are on pre from the queen and bishop. Um, so that's a quick line I'd recommend in Russian various. That's also pretty popular, so you might get that a couple, uh, in a couple of games. What else can they play here? Well, they can obviously play c takes d5 and go back into main Grunfeld. They can play bishop f4, castles, rook c1. Then you just take and play bishop g4. Start attacking attacking this d4 pawn. So in knight h5 should be free. You can take on f3. g takes f3, e5. And. Yeah, I really like Black's position now. He's got these double pawns. And <coughs> if um, White can play Queen to 
queen to h4. And there's, no, there's nowhere to put this king. Obviously, this rook's already moved. Not going to castle queen side. We can't castle queen side now anyway. You try castle king side. You know, this queen's already coming in, and it's, it's looking very risky. So bishop f4 is not really a good line to try to get anything out of either. Anything out of the game. Um, but another alternative is bishop g5, and this is the line I was recommending. The simple line I was recommending is, is white. Uh, if, to play against the Grunfeld. Now knight e4, take on d5, take on g5, take on g5, e6. And the idea now is we're going to win back our, win back our, our pawn, because the knight has to retreat. Knight moves back, we take on d5. E3 castles, bishop e2. In, the, in uh, my video, I recommend bishop d3, it's slightly more aggressive. Bishop d3, same thing, there is c6 castles, queen d6, rook b1, and just gets these pawns going as white. Back and placing like bishop g4, b4, knight d7, a4, and start going with f5, and now start playing knight f6, uh, oops, knight f6, knight into e4. And uh, yeah, these positions are. They're not so theoretical, it's just more the better player is going to win. So the better player, the better plan is going to win win this sort of position. Um, so that's all there is really to these sort of positions, and that's why I re sort of recommended it for white. You take If you don't know much theory, you don't have much time to, time to learn theory, especially against something like the Grunfeld, where the black player is going to be pretty well prepared. And this line as a white could be could be pretty useful because it's just a pretty straightforward plan. Play b4 and a4 and b5 and just try to uh, attack on the queen side. And you're pretty you got a pretty solid position, so it is hard for black to actually break through. Um, so I'm just trying to think of other lines. I think you can play g6, d5. Pretty sure there's an f there's an f3 line you can play at some point. I can't remember where it is. Play, play f3 now. Okay, so F3, if you had Grunfeld play, you play D5. So he takes knight takes E4 and then knight B6. This is another way to play uh, to play Grunfeld. There's no knight on, C, on C3, you always put your knight back on B6. Knight C3, bishop G7, bishop B3, castles, queen D2, knight C6, castles, queen side. So this is quite an aggressive system for white. It's like a Yugoslav attack. And you're going to get go G4, H4, H5, and put the bishop in H6. And yeah, it's really aggressive. So now black counters with F5. And a lot of players that have this sort, that like having this sort of structure in the center, do not like it being challenged at all. And often they'll try play not so great moves just to keep it intact. But now after something like this, this is not very good because already Black can start playing some moves like Bishop B4, uh, Bishop B6, Knight B4, and then something like C6 and get really nice outposts for Knight on D5. So this is a really bad way for for White to play. Um, f5, so e4, you can just play knight b4 or something first, and now knight h3, bishop e6, attacking the pawn, and then you say after king v1, you know, you just stick a knight in there, or you can play c6, and and uh, I'll probably put a knight in here first because black's gonna threaten, uh, white's threatening knight f4 himself, so put a knight on d5, now with knight f4, we can just you can even take on f4 if you want, you can take on c3, because tactics on. Taxes on e2, uh, but yeah, it's really really your choice. You can just take you can take on f4, takes in c6, and I just stick another knight back in there. So this is really solid for black. So no need to fear this. And I remember the other thing I need to cover. It's going to be d5 and oh no, not d5. It's g3, g3 here. Bishop g7, knight f3, knight f3, bishop g2, they're all sort of transposed into the same thing. Castles, bishop g2, and uh, yeah, normally black tries to wait as long as possible to, before playing d5. So now it's going to launch d5, castles, and now it's this sort of system. Black, white doesn't really get anything, it's very, it's very, it's like, it's, like, it's more for solid players. It's now black can just play something like c6 and cd, cd, knight c3, and the position becomes very symmetrical, to say, after knight, knight e c6, and there's really not much in the game. And uh, I've seen like international masters playing weaker players, and they've really 
as white here. And they've really just struggled to even win the game. So I don't know why they try to choose this. They try to grind them down eventually. With like a really boring position. Um, because Kronfeld players supposedly like playing like really aggressive. That's why I did choose playing Grunfeld. So it sort of t uh, takes a sting out of the opening. But you can play something like knight e4 here. Make things more, more ambitious. Knight takes e4, d takes e4. Um, and it just uh, provides complications in the position. Knight five, f6. Going through check e6, knight c4, and now knight c6. So counterattack is poor enough to e3, f5. And this is the way to go if you're looking to win, if you're maybe playing against a weaker opponent. Like bishop d2, rook b8, now looking for to play b5. And uh, yeah, I'll definitely, I'll definitely play this if, if you're trying to play play for a win. But if, you, if you're playing against a stronger opponent and you're happy with a draw, then, then you just go with knight c6 and. After knight e5, just play e6, um, bishop f4, and you can just take, take, and pretty much everything just ends up coming off eventually. You get a sort of position, and he's going to put everything on c5, and he's going to get traded off on c5 eventually, and there's really not much in the position here at all. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty sure that's everything covered. Um... So I think I missed a line in the exchange variation uh, with bishop c4. Castles. Knight 2. c5. Also, black can play knight c6 here. This is an interesting move. Um, those of you who might know Caden Trough, I played him last year in this American Rapper Play event. He played this against me as black. I was playing white, and um, if for those of you who don't know Caden, he just won the under fourteen world championships. I think I believe uh, it was a really good achievement. So he plays knight c six here, and it seems odd to play a move like this because you're stopping c five, which is like your main break in the in the Grunfeld, But instead, you look to play e five instead. Um, so it's after castles. You can you can play b6 or go e5 straight away. And b6 is a slightly more popular b bishop e3, and you can. Oh, this is another line as well. I think I've seen Spidler playing like this, and he's a. Uh, if you really want to learn the Grunfeld world, then you have to go look at Spidler's games. Um, Peter Spidler, a Russian GM, um, like 2700. If he's, I'm pretty sure everyone knows who he is. But he's a very he's an expert on on the Grunfeld. So these, as these B6 lines, you want to try to surprise someone, take someone out of theory, that's white. Or you can just take, play the E5 line, D5, Knight A5, Bishop D3, um, B6, C4. And basically what it is, it just leads to a similar position as before. There's a line that we, I showed you earlier where you get you root, root, root the Knight around this side, you go F4, G5, and get a really nice kingside attack. And the Knight sits really well on, on, um, on D6. So this is also another sideline you could play if you if you want to sort of could take you take your opponent out of theory because you know I was playing the white position here and yeah since you play knight c6 I don't really know what I was doing I just play moves like bishop e3 uh, yeah I start playing moves like bishop e3 rook b1 I put my rook on d1 and yeah he actually beat me in that game we played twice. I beat him as black, and he beat me as black, so it was a 1-1. Um, yeah, I beat him for f good old French, which is always good. And so, yeah, I think pretty sure that's it. Uh, I, I thought there might be a line where you can play... Which I forgot, wait, you, yeah, here you go. Pretty big line here. Rook B1, and... Rook B1, or, and Rook C1 also. This is one way to play. It's pretty solid, and also against like rook c1, you can you can take take queen a5 check, and uh, king f1 has been played here. Normally this is because queen d2, you just take on d2. See so bishop can't take. If bishop takes d2, this pawn on d4 is hanging, so king has to take on d2, and then it's quite it's not so great for white because after rook d8. His pawn's already been as on pre and it's pinned against the king, so they try to play d5, he's play e6, and it's 
it's going to become isolated. And there's not much, there's no, no good squares for the king. You know, king c3 can protect the pawn, get out the get out this pin, but now it walks into another pin. So this is also and not not great. So the rook c1, rook b1 lines are okay, but I personally think these. This is the main line: castles, bishop g4. This is where you're going to get um, a lot of your games will be will be in this bishop g4 line. So if you do want to learn the Grunfeld and learn uh, and, and have success with it, I'd um, make sure you learn these vari variations very well. The bishop takes f7 check line and the bishop d3 in this line where uh, you get the exchange. So I'd learn those very well because they're pretty theoretical and uh, they're, they're what you, that's what you're going to get most of the time. If you don't want to play bishop g4, there's also other options here. You can play something like queen c7. Rook c1, rook d8, put your rook on the on the d file. It's always good to know other sidelines. Uh, just to keep your opponents guessing so they can't prepare against you. They don't know exactly which line you're going to play in the Grunfeld. They may know they're going to play the Grunfeld, but you may play all these different sidelines they don't know when you're always going to stop them from preparing against you. So it's always good. Like when I when I play the French or classical Dutch, I have a couple of um or even the Grunfeld, you know, I, I have a couple of other other variations I can play and divert to um, to keep my opponents guessing, and they can't so they can't prepare against me, which gives you a big advantage. And here I think uh, there's a game between uh, David Howe and somebody. Yeah, just search it up. I can't remember what it was. David Howe. I think it was against Geary. Yeah, I think it was against Geary in Holland. Uh, I can't remember. But anyways, the game sort of went like this. This is the line that's played. And it's pretty solid for black. It's the same sort of plan. They're going to go with knight b6, knight d6, f5, f4. And expand, expand on the um, on the on the king side. So yeah, there you go. I've covered all the lines in the Grunfeld. Um, all, all the main lines anyway. The main anti-lines. Um, obviously there's all sorts of stuff you can do against the Grunfeld. Like... You, I've had people that have tried doing random stuff like after d5, just going h4 straight away, and just trying to kill me on the king side really early. But this sort of stuff is no good. You know, if you're really that scared about it, so you can just play h5, and you just you just got a Grunfeld, but with h4, h5, and this actually benefits black because g6 is already this is already well, well protected. Whereas when white castles king side, they're gonna have a really weak pawn. Yeah, they don't, they don't want to play g3 because unless they're gonna finchetto. So, a lot of these other sidelines you don't really need to worry about, and uh, yeah, um, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you, if I did miss anything, or you, you want to know what to play against something, then you just comment, and I can either uh, re-edit the video, or I can um, just comment in the in the comments, just just telling you what to do, basically. So anyway, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.